Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 1.5, rewriting equations from the Big Ideas textbook for Algebra 1, in which we ask the essential question, how can you use a formula for one measurement to write a formula for a different measurement? All right. Um, well, we're going to rewrite it. And uh, let's get started here. The uh, first thing we have is a uh, vocabulary term, and that's literal equation. An equation that has two or more variables is called a literal equation. Two or more variables. Now, uh, we can't solve, you cannot solve an equation that has um, two or more variables because when one variable changes, the other variable changes too because they're related to each other. Um, so what we're going to do here is what we call a uh, write. Um, well, let me read this to you here. To rewrite a literal equation, we're going to solve. We know how to do that for one variable. We're going to isolate it on one side of the equation. We know how to do that. And sometimes this is referred to as solving for a variable in terms of the other variables. And uh, I think this one doesn't really belong there. Solving for a variable in terms of the other variables. And in other words, that means we're going to get a certain variable um, alone on one side of the equation. We're solving for that variable, just like we would solve a regular equation. Okay, so what's that going to look like? Let's take a look. Example one, rewriting a literal equation. I've got this literal, literal equation. I'm going to rewrite it here, give myself a little more room. 3y plus 4x equals 9. And we want to solve for y. We're going to solve this for y. I want to get the y by itself here. OK, let's try this here. So uh, y is being multiplied by 3, and then 4x is being added to that. So using inverse operations here, just like we would solve for any other uh, type of variable, uh, any other type of equation, I'm going to try to get that y by itself. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. That cancels uh, those two, because 4x minus 4x is 0. That leaves me 3y on the left. Now on the right, I can't really... Um, I can't combine these. They're not like terms. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, combine them together. So all I can do is write them as uh, as an expression. So uh, it's negative four x plus nine. Uh, usually, now you could put nine minus four x. I'm not sure what the book has here, um, but generally in algebra. Uh, there, you know, there's certain, certain rules that we try to follow. Usually we put the variable terms first and then the constants at the end. Okay, now on the left side, it's 3 times y. Well, I don't want 3 times y, so I'm going to divide that by 3. And I'll do the other side by 3 as well. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that leaves 1 on the left. No, on the right, I have negative 4. Uh, what I'm going to do here is watch. 4, negative 4. Oops, thirds x plus 9 thirds. And I'm doing this because when I looked at this, I noticed that 9 divided by 3 would simplify. So y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 3. So uh, dividing the right side by 3 makes this first term into a fraction, negative 4 thirds, and I can simplify the, uh, the right one. There may be some other examples that we do where uh, you can just leave the whole thing divided by uh, a 3 or something like that. Uh, we'll see. Okay, get this in your notes. And let's look at example 2. We're going to rewrite this one for x. Now, this one's a little trickier. Why is this trickier? Well, because the problems just get harder as we keep going into... Uh, <laughs> into the math. It is just what it is. We're going to uh, solve this one for x, but we'll notice we have x in both of these two terms here. Uh, this is 3 times x. This is 5 times x times z. So I can't add these together. They're not like terms because they have different variables as factors. This one, of course, has a z in there, so I can't uh, do that. What I can do is what we call factoring. Now, this is kind of, a, kind of an advanced idea here. 
Um, the left side is going to stay the same here for right now. But the right side, since there's an x being multiplied in the first term and an x being multiplied in the second term here, I can what we call factor this out. I can turn this into a multiplication expression. When I'm, you have to think of this as kind of a reverse distributive property. I'm not multiplying into uh, an addition expression. I'm dividing out of an addition expression. So since they both have x, I can think of this as x times 3 plus five z okay so if you're not sure what i did there you know take a look at take a look at what happens from step one to step two here i'm dividing x out of the the two terms here out of this term and this term and it looks like this and what do i leave behind a three and a five times z okay well i want the x by itself but now this is because this was multiplied what what do i have to do to uh to isolate my inverse operation inverse operation would be division of both sides by 3 plus 5z. Okay, so these will cancel and these will cancel. And this will be y over, and I'm going to change this to 5z plus 3. Um, I don't think it, I'm not sure what the book has. Again, I should be looking at the book to see. But again, in, in normal algebra, we try to, when we write these expressions, we try to put the variable first and the numbers at the end. Okay, so uh, let's um, go, go to example. Oh, I have a new vocabulary term for us here. I'm sorry. New vocabulary term. You kind of know this one already. Formula. Well, you know, you think of what formulas are. Um, it's a type of literal equation that shows how one variable is related to one or more um, other variables. Essentially, it's a literal equation. Um, and we're going, and I think the only um, difference here is that they're using formulas for things that you may know, like um, the formula for the area of a square or a circle or something like that. So they're going to call those formulas. Okay, let's see here. Example three, rewriting a formula for surface area. So this is really the same kind of thing here because, uh, again, we're just rewriting this um, in this in this case uh, for a certain variable, in this case, L for the length here. So our formula for the uh, surface area <clears throat> of a rectangular prism, S equals 2 times L times W plus 2 times L times H plus 2 times W times H. I think those are right. <laughs> okay, so we want to get the L by itself. So I have an L here and an L here, right? In case you can't read my writing, I have an L here and an L here. So this is require a couple steps, just like we just did. First thing I want to do is subtract... Um, the two W H from both sides. Okay, so that'll turn that into a zero. Then the left side becomes S minus two W H equals two times L times W plus two times L times H. Mm. Okay, now, now what do I gotta do? Um, but by the way, this S, this big S is not a variable. Okay. So don't turn it into a little S, leave it as a big S and the same thing for variables. If they're lowercase, leave them uppercase, uh, letters mean something else. Okay. We, now we can do what we did in the uh, previous, uh, problem. I can factor out the L to get that by itself. So L times, uh, the quantity two W plus two H that's going to all be equal to the big S minus two W H. And now I can divide both sides by the two W plus two H. And that leaves me with S 
minus 2wh all over 2w plus 2h. And that is indeed my final rewritten formula for length. So if I had the surface area of a prism and its length and its width and its uh, height, I could figure out its length. Oh, a lot of work. Okay. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, I'm about 10 minutes in. And I'm skipping to example seven because with example seven, um, we, we come across this new uh, formula here. When we pick this up in class, there's all these different little formulas that they give us that you're going to be uh, dealing with a lot. We've already uh, dealt with distance equals rate times time. You'll see that in your science class a lot this year. Uh, this one is simple interest. Interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. And it says you deposit $5,000 in an account that earns simple interest. After six months, the account earns $162.50 in interest. What is the annual interest rate? So the first thing we want to do here is solve this for uh, the R, the interest rate. And that's going to be pretty straightforward. I can divide, I can divide out the uh, principal and the time on both sides. Um, so that becomes a 1. This becomes a 1. And I get left with interest divided by principal times time equals the rate. Okay, so then the question is here, uh, in five, uh, you deposit the $5,000 in an account that earns simple interest. After six months, the account earns $162.50 in interest. What is the annual interest rate? Okay, so we can um, plug all these things here. The interest, uh, 162.50. Uh, the principal, the principal, uh, and I, I, I apologize if you don't understand some of these words. Principal is the amount you're starting with. So the principal is the amount we're putting in the five thousand dollars. The time, well, this is uh, this is an annual. We're looking. This is a, a formula for annual interest, but this is six months, so that's half of a year. So uh, 0 0.5. Okay, then we can bring up the calculator. Okay, so there's my calculator, and um, it's really important when you do these things that you understand how to use the calculator. In this case, um, remember, when you have a big division bar like this, you want to do the division last. So I can do this one in my head. The 5,000 times 0.5 is 2,500. So this basically comes out to 162.5 divided by 2,500, and that's going to equal... 0 0.065 rate. Now the thing about this rates are when uh, interest rates are in uh, percents, so uh, the percentage would be 6.5 percent. That's how we would uh, answer this question. So uh, this is a good example of where the answer to our equation is not necessarily the answer to the question. The annual interest rate is in percents. This is a decimal form of the percent. So we have to do that one last conversion step in order to uh, answer the question. Okay. Uh, you try this one here. Again, this is um, the same formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. How much money must you deposit in a simple interest account to earn $500 interest in five years at 4% annual interest? Okay, you give this one a try. We'll uh, have you put the answer in at the end of this video. But other than this, that is it for this video. So thanks a lot and have a great, great rest of your day.